All right, so uh, this is Dr. Morton, and we're going to talk about um, how to calibrate the touch panel. Okay, so um, I already recorded this once, but it was a little confusing, and I've sort of modified it, and hopefully it'll be a lot uh, better. Okay, so I'm going to kind of explain, and I'm going to demonstrate it, and hopefully this is going to work great. We'll see. All right, so the first thing I want to do is uh, cover a little bit of the linear algebra and kind of how this works. Uh, so we're going to talk about calibrating the touch panel. And I'm not going to talk about the PID today. I'm going to save that uh, because I want you to focus strictly on getting the, the touch panel calibrated. For those of you who are uh, want to work with the tilt table, come in and pick one up this week. I'd like you to work in a group of two or three, but if if you you know, but uh, until we run out of touch panels, I'll, I'll let people work by themselves. We will have about hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have 18 uh, all set to go. We've got about 12 or 14 now that are all ready to go, and uh, we should get the rest of them. A couple of them had uh, needed some new connectors. Uh, they had a couple of problems with the connector. But we'll, we'll crimp those on and get that all set up. And hopefully we'll have 18 ready to go by, say, Thursday or Friday of next week. So you can come in Thursday or Friday and, and pick up a touch panel, and I, uh, a tilt table, and I encourage you to do that. I, I do want you to be careful with them, but they're, you know, as long as you don't drop them or drop the steel ball hard on the, uh, on the touch panel, uh, you shouldn't tear them up. Uh, they, they all come with a built-in, um, with a built-in, um, uh, freedom boards already mounted uh, with the adapter board. So we've got uh, we we have an we have an adapter board. Um, the adapter board sort of looks like this, only it, it's yellow instead of instead of red. And uh, we have changed it out. But uh, anyway, you'll see them. I'll go over. I'll probably talk about that in the in the lecture for next week. This is kind of a, an accessory lecture just to help you kind of know how to get it calibrated. All right. So so I'm going to talk about that and then. The following week, I'll talk about the PID controller. If you're gonna, if you're gonna just not use the actual hardware, and you wanna, because you're in Houston, you don't wanna come. That's fine. You can, you can basically dry lab it. You can just pretend like you have a tilt panel. You won't be able to actually test your code, but you can definitely write your code, and uh, and you can give it the best shot. And I'll look at your uh, at the code you come up with and see, you know, how realistic it is. And maybe we'll even, uh, you know. Maybe we'll even put some of it, uh, uh, download it and run it on one of the tilt tables to see if, you know, what it would do. And then, you know, you can fiddle with it. All right. So the way we're going to do this is uh, we're, we're, we're going to, so, well, let me, let me show this first. I think this is helpful. So here's, here's the touch panel right here. It has the connector coming out uh, one side. And we're going to, we're going to define uh, just arbitrarily, we're going to call where the connector comes out uh, the back, and this is going to be the front. This is left, this is right. So back, front, left, right. And this point down here will be our will be our zero zero point. Now we can pick whatever scale we want to use here, as long as it'll you know fit in the size of the variables that we have, and uh, we have sixteen bit. Um, integers, or we could even do 32-bit ones, but we're, we're going to use mostly 16-bit integers, and then we'll also use uh, some floating points for our for our coefficients. But we're going to try and we'll do the calculation in floating point, but we're going to we're going to implement the the dimensions here are going to be an integer, uh, so we'll have to cast those to floats. Uh, anyway, or maybe we'll make them floats, and then but uh, but we, but we'll make we'll try and treat them mostly as integers. Okay. So we're going to go from 0 to 2,000 on the x-axis and 0 to 2,000 on the y-axis. So, so if this were perfectly calibrated, uh, the, the way this works, and we've been over this before, but remember, we, we, we put 3.3 uh, volts up here on the back, and we put 0 volts here, and then we read either the left or the right uh, uh, um, terminal, and and uh, and that goes to our A to D converter, and then we um, we get a value, and our value is going to be it's a 12-bit value, so it's going to be from zero 
to 2048. Now, since we're only using uh, zero to 2000, we'll basically have to divide that roughly in half to scale it, but maybe not quite, because what, what we'll see here in just a minute is that this point, that the raw values for this point are not zero, zero, and the raw values for this point aren't gonna be 4000, 4000, or you know, uh, 4096, they're, they're gonna be 2000 or 3000 something, 3000, I don't know, 80 or something. And same way, same way up here, this cor this corner should be zero zero, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be you know like 300, 300 or something. I don't know. Let's see. Is like 380 and 650, 380x, 650y. This is going to be 320 and 3180. This is going to be 3380 and 2850, and this is going to be uh, 3530 and 440. So so if we look at this. Here, here's, here's what we want for our, ideal, our idealized reading. What we want is, we want this, okay? We want, we want this to read 0, 0. We want this to read 0, 2,000. We want this to read 2,000, this corner to read 2,000, 2,000. And this corner to read um, 2,000, 0, okay? And the center to read uh, 1,000, 1,000, okay? I should have put that on there. Uh, okay, and the center to read 1,000, 1,000. I should have put another comma over here. Okay, so anyway, so that's what we want. But it's not going to read that. In fact, what it actually reads is this. It reads... 3880 and 650 for the 00. zero. It reads 320, 3180 for up here. But notice the y value, it's straight across. So you would expect the y value over here to be 3180, but it's not. It's 2850. So it's about 300 less. And up here, the X, over here, the x reads 3380, but down here it reads 3530, almost 200 more or 150 more. So uh, and then this reads 440 instead of zero. Here it reads 650. So you can see there, there's there's a little bit of a problem. The x, it's rotated a little bit like this. And then the other problem is the center will read it wrong, so it'll be translated a little bit. So we want to we want to take out the translation. We want to take out the rotation, and we want to take out the scaling. So we wind up with this. So we want to read a raw value of 3880 650. And we want that to map to 0, 0. We want to read a raw value of 3380 and 2850. We want, to write, we want that to map to 2000, 2000. So how do we do that? How, do we, how would we do that? Well, what we do is we write, we, we write equations that would translate these things. So for each one of these things, we can, we can write a, a linear equation that, that represents a straight line. And, and if all the straight lines, for e a straight line for this point, a straight line for this point, straight line for this point, straight line for this point. And if they all intersected at the same point, then we'd have one solution and we can map everything that way. But since it doesn't work out that way, I actually didn't measure the center. I'll do that in a minute. Um, well, let's do that. I'll show you how, show you how we actually measure these things. So, so, uh, so I'm just going to put pressure on the center point here and I'm going to, I'm going to use this a little, I, kind of a doll, but you know, like a ballpoint pen will work fine. And, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the code. Now, uh, we'll go over the code more in a minute. But basically, the way the code does, it, it, prints, out, it prints out this set of instructions. And here's what it looks like in our uh, thing. Read the, X, read the X, and let's see if it's actually going to work. Yeah, it is. OK, so, read, so if we punch a 1, it's going to read, the X, read and display x and y raw values. And it'll stop 20. So we're going to get 20 samples. So what I'm going to do. Uh, and I'll show you the tilt table again. I'm going to hold pressure right here in that center mark, and and you you are you will need to put a little uh, dot in the center, and you should kind of scale. It should be I, I I just eyeballed it, but you should actually measure it out with a little you know with some graph paper or something, and you should have you should have it centered right there. All right, now I'm going to hit one. Oh crap! I didn't. My cursor must have gotten out of here. It did. Okay, and now 
Lord knows where I put that one. Let me go see. Well, I'm I'm gonna gosh bless I hate this. But I don't know. Alright, well I'm gonna maybe it never went maybe it didn't go anywhere. I hope it didn't, but if it did, it could be screwed. Okay, maybe it was over here. Alright, so I'm gonna have the cursor in here. I'm gonna hold this on the center. And then I'm gonna hit one and see what happens. Okay, good. Now it collected twenty samples pretty fast actually and here they are here are my 20 samples right there and you can make your window bigger if you want so if I look at them this is 1941 2072 1946 2072 so basically uh, it looks like that center I might do this again because I'm not totally happy with that we'll do it again oh crap no it didn't work uh, is, is it really? Oh yeah, okay, it's working. All right. All right, I don't know. Did it do it? I guess it did. Okay, so it's reading 1953, 2028. So basically, we'll say 20, 2025, 1958, 2025. Okay, so we'll put that in. All right, so now these are these are what my these these were what the points actually read. All right. So so those are my raw readings and this but this is what I actually want for my calibrated readings. Okay, so how does this work? So what we're going to do is we're going to use some we're going to use some linear algebra and make this work out and 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 it'll be pretty cool. And I'm going to use these values and put these values in. Well, I'll leave them there. All right. So let me bring up MATLAB. Uh, here. All right. Here's MATLAB. And then I'm going to bring up the plot here. We'll get rid of the plot here in a minute. Okay. So so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have to, I have to put in my, so I'm going to have five values all together. And I'm going to have some x values and some y values. All right, my x values. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with the zero zero point. So I'll start with start with zero zero, and and so these these are going to be the actual. This is what I this is what I want my idealized values to be. Zero zero, zero two thousand, two thousand two thousand, two thousand zero, and then one thousand one thousand. Okay, so uh, so now I'm going to do that. So in my X, I'm just going to put those in. And let me see if I can shrink this down a little bit so I can actually. Uh, yeah. All right, and then we'll, we'll hold this so you can kind of see it. All right, so. So my x value, so I'm going to do, my first x value is going to be 0. And then my next one's going to be 0 because I'm going to go up and do the upper point. Oh, I, I need a semicolon. Actually, I think I think you can do spaces too, actually. But And then, um, then I'm going to put in, uh, then it's going to be 2,000. Then another 2,000. And then finally the center, 1,000. All right, those are my x values. And then for my y values, it'll be a little bit different. I'm going to start with 0. And then my next one will be 2,000. Then my next one will be 2,000. Then my next one will be 0. And then it'll be 1,000. All right, so those are my y. Now I need to put in the raw values. 
Now the raw values, there's one little tricky thing. I need, I need three columns in my matrix because I'm, I'm actually going to have three coefficients. Uh, two of the coefficients are multiplied by the x raw and the y raw uh, for, for, to calculate a, x cal calibrated. And then two more for, are multiplied by x raw and y raw to calculate y calibrated. But for each of the x and the y calibrated, I've got an additional number that doesn't, de doesn't depend on x or y. It, it is just a translational value. And so that's why I have to append a 1. So in my matrix up here, I, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have, so I'm going to start with, uh, in the matrix, I'm going to put in the raw values. Well, what are the raw values? Well, the raw values are what I actually measured. Now, that I probably should do it again and average them and be a little more careful about it, but I'm going to just going to do this. So my first x is going to be 380, 450, and 1. So 380, 450, and 1. And then my next group is going to be 320 and 3180. 320 and the Y is 3180. Then the next group, and 1 of course, the next group is going to be 3380, 2850, and 1. The next group is going to be 3530, 440, and 1. And finally, my center is going to be uh, I think it was 8, 18, 1958. Yeah, 1958 and 2025 and 1. Again, remember the 1 is my translational coefficient, which doesn't depend on x and y. Um, it's, it lets me center my, my results. All right, now, now the way this works, uh, let me go back. Yeah, so, so we're going to physically measure a number of points on the panel, and we have to do at least three. I did five. When you do the corners, remember you have to be inside of the edges, at least two, three, four, five percent maybe, because the, the very edges are, the, are essentially the left electrode, the right electrode, the, the back electrode, and the front electrode. And that's what our four-wire interface is connected to. So if you get on those, it doesn't work because the, the top and the bottom don't touch. They're, those are, they have separating dots over there to keep those insulated from each other. Um, and then there's a resistive coating. So you have to be, you have to be inside where the resistive coating is. Um, and so you, so you do want to do the corners, but you have to be a little bit inside the actual touch surface. And uh, if you want, you could add midpoints on each side for nine. Uh, but we're just going to do five right now. You need you have to have three. Nine's probably better, but five is probably acceptable. All right, and we've got our reading for each point. It's really a, a raw voltage reading. You can actually see what the voltage was because we're applying zero and 3.3 .3 volts across each panel, and then we flip it and we tri-state those, and then put three zero and 3.3 .3 across the other panel, and and then we sense on the panel that's tri-stated, and we drive the voltage across the pan the other the panel that we're measuring. All right, so. Uh, so we have our we have our we have our idealized x and y points, which were zero zero, you know two thousand zero two thousand, two thousand two thousand, two thousand zero, and uh, and then the center one thousand one thousand. And so what what we we have basically are, are basically the slope intercept form of our line. And what we're going to do is we're we're going to create a system of equations to represent each point represents a line essentially and uh, the it's because it's a uh, yeah and so what what we do then we set up this system of equations and 
we have this matrix A, which we multiply by X, and that gives us, uh, and then that, that gives us uh, the, uh, a vector B, which will convert our raw values and transform them into our ideal, idealized values. Where A are the raw values and X is our idealized for X. And, uh, well, A is a vector with both X and Y in it. Um, okay, so anyway. So the way to do this uh, is we would, in, we would typically invert A, multiply bo both sides by the inverse of A, and that would give us X, the vector X, equals the inverse matrix A times B. But uh, A may very well not be invertible. And uh, in fact, it won't be because we know that uh, that we're, we don't have a perfect solution to this uh, to this set of set of lines. They don't all intersect at the same point. We're going to have some error. There's some nonlinearity and a bunch of other things that that cause it to not have a solution. So what we want is the we want the best um, approximate solution we can get. So what we're really looking for is essentially an x star bar, and uh, so to, but to do that, what we need is the projection of B onto uh, our plane defined by uh, our matrix A. And, uh, and so the way we do that is we multiply by the transform. So if we multiply A by the transform, we now have an invertible that's square, a matrix that's square and invertible. And so we do that. So we have, we have A transform A inverted times A transform times A transform A times X equals A transform A inverted times A transform B. And that works out then to uh, X equals this. And here's some example points anyway. Uh, when we get all done, we're going to come up with an, a vector F and a vector G. F is going to be A transform A, that inverted, times A transform times just the x values, the idealized x values. And this and g is going to be a transform a inverted times a transform times the vector y, which is going to be our set of idealized y values. So these are the, these would be the idealized. In our case, it would be 0, uh, 0, uh, 2,000, 2,000, 1,000, and that's it. We just have 5. Okay, and the same with the y, only slightly different because of the different points. And when we do this, this gives us because we have this one column here, we get we get a uh, we get a uh, a three element vector f f's a vector, g's a vector, and f is three elements, and those elements are the a the it would be it's a column vector here, uh, 0 0.0922, 0 0.0023, and 1.78. So th this would be the A coefficient, B coefficient, C, and this is the D, E, F. We use this to calculate Y. We use this to calculate X calibrated, this to Y for Y calibrated. All right, and then we can plot it out. All right, so let's, let's look at, um, so let's look at this. So here it is in MATLAB, and so we've put in our raw points, our idealized points, and then we're, we do the math with, uh, the inverse of A transform times A times A transform times X, and that's F, and G equals the inverse of A transform A times A transform times Y. Again, X and Y are the idealized vectors, and our matrix A is our raw data. And when we get all done, F and G represent the least square solution. The, in other words, the, the, most, the, the best approximate solution to our uh, system of equations that does not have a solution. Okay, and the best approximate solution then is what we're going to use to transform. So let's let's run this. I'm going to clear this down here. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry. Clear. And now we're going to run it. So we're plotting out. Now what you can see here is our scale goes from minus 500 to 2500 so we're really interested in 0 to 2000 and 0 to 2000 so this is our idealized map and you can and our red circles are the idealized points and the boxes are where our raw values are actually mapping to 
Now that one's right on, that one's right on. These are pretty close, not bad, and the center's a little off. Now what we can do if we want, since the center, if we look at this, that has a, y, a x value of 1035 and a y of 1183, and this has 1,000 to 1,000. So basically, if we go back here, we can add 35 to the, we can subtract 35 from the x, and we can subtract 183 from the y, and we can move that point directly on there. And we can do that right here uh, because we can do uh, we can do this equation plus, or, or in this case actually minus, what did I say, minus, uh, minus 35 for the x. And then we'll do another equation just like this. We'll do, we'll do this for g. We want the third element of g, because that's the translational coefficient. And we're going to subtract from that, what did I say? 183. And we maybe don't even have to do that. We could maybe do something like subtract half of that, maybe 90. And for the other one, maybe we subtract uh, 16 or something. or yeah, uh, 35, so 17 or eight, 18, something like that. All right, now if we run it, we'll get a different graph. Let's see what that shows. Um, why does that look so much worse? Well, no, I guess it's not so bad. Oh, they changed these, they changed the horizontal scale. They didn't go to 2,500 this time. It just went to 2,000. Interesting. So you can see it's not too bad here. It's a little worse there. It's a little worse there. It's not too bad there. Uh, so, but our center, which again, it, because we went minus 500 and minus 500, it looks screwy. But it's pretty close to 1,000, 1,000. This the red circle is 1,000, 1,000. And now we're we're really close. We're 1016 and 1093. We could take that out too and put that right on if we wanted. Maybe that's a better plan. These would move around. A these would move a little bit, but but you can play with you can play with the translational coefficient uh, without worrying about messing anything up. All right, so that's our approximation. Now, if we did more points, uh, it's not necessarily the case that we would better get a, that it would be better. But what we could do is do more points around the middle, closer to the middle. Uh, so maybe like at seven seven fifty. Uh, 1,000 and 1,750, uh, or, or actually uh, 1,350, and then same here, uh, 750, 1,350. When we could we could get one, two, three, four additional points right near the center, and then our center uh, math would probably be better. So that might be something to consider doing. Again, you're going to get the least square solution. But the more points you have near your area of primary interest, the better, a little better. So you can do that however you want. If you just want to use five points, that's fine. I will post this code on there, and you can run this and sort of see how it works. And the way I, the way I like you to go ahead and do, I, and I'm going to try and set the code up this way. But I'd like you to to consider your idealized setting, like this: zero, 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 two thousand, two thousand, two thousand, two thousand, zero. So in other words, that point would be zero, zero. That would be 2,000, uh, 0, 2,000. This would be 2,000, 2,000. That would be 2,000, 0. And this one would be 1,000, 1,000. That's the idea. OK, now, um, let's see. Um, yeah, so so now if you look down here, you can see uh, our, our final values. So these, these are the values that I have to put in for g. And these are the values I have to, uh, uh, sorry, I got two values for G. Why is that? I, go, I guess I just did it twice. Oh, because I didn't put a, I didn't put a, I didn't put a semicolon there. All right, so anyway, so here's F. So this would be my A coefficient, my B coefficient. Notice the A coefficient is, six, uh, is 0 0.6450, and the B is 0 0.0240. So of course, the X value plays has a much bigger contribution to the x calibrated value than the than the y raw value does but the y raw value has some co, co, con, contribute some and that's because there's some rotation and the same here the y value is uh, 768 
0.768 versus 0.0401. So here the x value contributes a little bit, the y contributes a lot to the y calibrated. And then we have this, this translational value here, which we adjusted somewhat, uh, although actually I printed it out before I adjusted it, so probably would want to change this printout down, to, uh, probably want to change the F and the G printouts down to here. But anyway, uh, so I modified it a little bit. Remember this last coefficient you can change and it's okay. Um, all right, so I'll put this up and you can you can see it. And, uh, and you can also look at your graph and uh, and you can see you know how close things are. All right. Now, uh, I think that's really what I wanted to cover. So hopefully that that'll that'll get you started. Uh, I did want to just look at this one more time. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it's here, right? All right. So if we this so here's our code, and again. This is the inf this is the infinite while loop sort of, and and you go down here and you get this uh, printout depending on what number. So there are a couple of numbers you can use here. And later on we're going to be testing the servos and doing some things. I'll show you a little bit about that too here in a minute. Maybe I'll maybe I'll run that too. Uh, let's let's do that real quick. So you can see here if I bring up my and it, right now it's cranked the way over, so I want to put this over here, and then uh, where's my stupid? Uh, okay, now I should be able to hit a two, and it, you should see it put the thing through its places. So what it does, and it says what it's going to do: x servo low, y servo low, x high, y high, and then both level. Then I can do center the X, I can put a, uh, so I can hit a five, centers the X and a, centers the Y. So, and it's supposed to put the other one low, but on mine, it puts the other one high. So obviously, uh, you might have your servos plugged in backwards and you might have, uh, probably not though, I think we'll leave them all plugged in correctly. And you might, and you might also have, um, uh, because on every tilt panel, on every tilt table, the servos have been mounted different ways. The 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 servo horns that move the the push rods, some are mounted pointing to the left, some are mounted pointing to the right. Uh, some of the servos are mounted inside, some are mounted outside and flipped around. All sorts of mountings. And because of that, uh, you may very well when you when you so the servo m more or less moves from something like 75 to 225. With one with 150 being centered, and and you can see that in the code, you um, you can see here uh, this is where this is the little routine I just re ran this case two set P PWM duty 75 150 wait a little bit 75 75 wait a little bit 210 75 wait 210 uh, 210 210 wait and then back to 150 150 so for mo for most of you 150 150 is going to be pretty close to level because we set them up that way. But 75 might go up, it might go down. 210 might go down, it might go up. So you just have to play with it. Uh, and then you'll have to change your numbers to move in the correct direction. Um, <coughs> because uh, this, the, you know, we're not gonna, I mean, it, it's okay that the servo works backwards. You, you just have to fix it in software, that's all. Okay, so, so you have these cases, uh, well, you can see on the, Printout. You have one is read and display 20 x 20 raw values for x and y. So you have to remember you have to touch the touch panel to get them though. If even if you read it with no touch, you're going to read something. In fact, if you if you do that, I'll do it right now. Oh, oh, I guess I have to restart it. Well, whatever. But anyway, when you first read it, you you'll read it without a touch, and it and it reads kind of goofy. It it still reads something. Uh, but it's probably not right. Uh, well, it isn't because there's no touch. Uh, and then, then you can test the servos where it's supposed to move the X low and that, then Y low, then X high and then Y high and then both level. And you see if they both go high or if one goes low and the other goes high, you'll know you have to change the signs on those servos. And then when you center the X, it, it's supposed to put the Y low. 
And when you center the Y, it's supposed to put the X low. So you can look at it and sort of figure this out. When you actually run your code, you're gonna, well, and you can display calibrated values uh, on three once you put your coefficients in. So you can, you can see how close your calibrated value is to what you want it to be. And then in four, you can actually run your code. Now, your code is gonna have to be put in. And so here's, here's what that's gonna look like. So when you get down to case four, I went ahead and I'll, I'll put in for you the calibration to get it calibrated. But you'll have to put in your, your, a, your a cal, that's your a coefficient, your b cal, your b coefficient, and your c cal. Notice the a cal is multiplied by x raw. The b cal is multiplied by y raw, plus the c cal gives you the x cal. And the y cal is the d cal times the x raw, the e cal times the y raw, plus the f the translational coefficient. And uh, so once you put these coefficients in and you read a raw value, then you should automatically be able to get your cal values here. Based on your calibrated values, you're gonna plug those into your PID controller. And we'll talk about how to do that. And then out of your P, you'll have a PID controller for your x-axis, you'll have one for your y-axis. And out of those, you will get a correction. And that correction then gets applied to your servos. And you have to make sure that when you get a plus correction, means the servo needs to go up. You may need to move the servo numbers down instead. So you may have to fiddle with some signs to get that right. All right, I think I'm going to quit with that. And uh, there'll be more to come next week.